In a previous video, we've looked at the topic of inductance or self-inductance in a coil of wire. But this brings us on to the topic of mutual inductance, where we have two coils of wire, and the topic of transformers or transformer theory. A transformer is basically made up of two coils of wire. We call them the primary coil and the secondary coil. And because of mutual inductance, an AC voltage can be applied across the primary coil, and this will induce a voltage in the secondary coil. This is very interesting because the primary and the secondary coils have no electrical connection between them. You'll see my diagram here. The primary and the secondary coil are completely separate from one another. There's no electrical connection between them. But what they do have is what we can think of as a magnetic connection. The primary coil creates a magnetic field which induces a voltage and a current in the secondary coil. Another thing to point out is that this relationship is governed by the number of turns. If, in this case in my diagram, the secondary has more turns than the primary, a greater voltage will be induced on the secondary than we had supplied to the primary. Conversely, we could have less turns on the secondary, and that means that a smaller voltage would be induced on the secondary than the primary. In this case, though, we're looking at an example um, where we have more turns on the secondary than the primary. And this is what we call a step-up transformer. We're stepping up the voltage so that it's higher uh, on the output, or the secondary, than it was on the primary, or the input. Because this is governed by the ratio of the number of turns, it leads us to our important formula for transformer theory, which looks like this. NP over NS equals VP over VS. Well, what do these terms mean? NP, first of all, represents the number of turns on the primary coil, and NS, the number of turns on the secondary. Let's say in my example here, I have 200 turns on the primary coil, so NP equals 200. And I know from my example that I want to step up 50 volts to 230 volts. And so my question is, how many turns are required on my secondary coil? NS is the unknown in this case. So using our formula here, I'm going to rearrange it into the form NS equals. And one trick to make this easier, because we have fractions on both sides of the formula, we're allowed to flip both of those fractions upside down. So we can say NS over NP equals VS over VP. Now that we have it in this form, we can multiply both sides by NP. So rather than dividing by NP, that will disappear. And on this side, I'm multiplying by NP as well. And so now I have my formula NS equals VS over VP multiplied by NP. Let's put some values in here and calculate the number of turns on the secondary coil. So first of all, Vs, uh, in this case, the voltage on the secondary is 230, over Vp, which is 50, multiplied by Np, which is 200. And calculating that gives me an answer of 900 and 20 turns. So I have 920 turns on my secondary. I can step up a 50 volt input on my primary and induce a voltage of 230 volts on the secondary coil. In our example, we saw that there's also a current of five amps applied to the primary but we don't know the current induced in the secondary coil. The current is also governed by the ratio of the number of turns. And so we're going to have to extend our formula that we looked at originally to include another term for current. And it looks like this. We've already said NP over NS equals VP over VS. But we're going to say that that's equal to IS over IP. 
Now, I haven't made a mistake here. You'll notice that we've got the primary over the secondary in the first two terms, but the last one is the opposite way around. It's the secondary current over the primary current. So now that we have this, we can use this formula to calculate our secondary current, Is. We already know the primary current, 5 amps marked in our diagram. Now, we don't need the whole formula here. We only need two of the three sections in our formula. So what I could do is I could discard this middle section here, Vp over Vs, and I would still have a complete formula. NP over NS equals IS over IP. Again, I want to rearrange my formula into the form IS equals. And so to do that, we can multiply both sides by IP. So we'll have IS equals NP over NS multiplied by IP. And if we put some numbers in, to our formula here, we know that NP is 200, we know that NS is 920, and we know that IP is 5 amps. And if I calculate that, I get an answer of 1.09 amps. So now that I know the current in the secondary coil, and I also know the voltage in the secondary coil, we can multiply these together to calculate the power in the secondary coil. So our formula for power is P equals I times V. Power is current times voltage. But in this case, we're dealing with the power in the secondary coil. So I'm going to add a subscript S there. The power in the secondary is equal to the current in the secondary coil multiplied by the voltage across the secondary coil. And we know all these values now, so we can say that the power in the secondary coil is 1.09 multiplied by the voltage across the secondary, which is 230 volts. And calculating that gives me an answer of 250.7 watts. And one thing to mention here is that this calculation is for what, we, for what we call an ideal transformer. And by an ideal transformer, I mean a transformer that suffers no losses. When a transformer induces a current in the secondary coil and creates a voltage in the secondary coil, this process in reality is not really a perfect process and energy is lost along the way. And so an ideal transformer, whilst it's useful for our calculations, isn't really representative of what would happen realistically. We're going to encounter some losses along the way. Here though for our ideal transformer we can see that despite a little bit of rounding we're getting the same power on the secondary coil as we have on the input coil. If we imagine calculating the input power it would be the input the primary voltage multiplied by the input of the primary current 50 times 5 which would give me 250 watts on the input, which is essentially what we're getting on the output. So we've lost no power from inducing a current in the secondary created by the primary. In reality though, uh, we're going to have an efficiency that is less than 100%. And let's say for example's sake that the efficiency of the transformer that we have here is 70%. Let's now calculate the power in the secondary coil, but I'll mark it as the actual power, um, which takes into account the losses that we encounter in this transformer. So because it has an efficiency of 70%, it's very easy to work out the actual power. We'll just multiply um, our ideal power, 250.7, by 70%, or as a decimal, that would be 0.7. And if we calculate that, I get a power of 175.49, which would be the actual power that we'd encounter on the secondary coil in this case. So 175.49 watts. So I hope you found this video useful, 
on basic transformer theory, calculating currents and voltages, but then also taking into account the efficiency of a transformer, which might affect our final answers.